Was it apartheid that you were escaping? We were escaping the apartheid South African control of Namibia, and we demanded a better education system. I'm African-American, but my soul is Namibian. to share more with you about the history of Namibia, this time through the eyes of Dr. Gondi Kamatuka. Now the theme over the last couple of days has been what does it mean to be an informed traveler in Namibia? And in large part that takes into account looking into the history of Namibia and its people, both collectively and individually. The focus over the last couple of days has been on the Herero and the Nama. So today we're going to stick to that theme and we're going to tie in the voices of Dr. Gandhi Kamatuka, a Herero man who grew up in Namibia during apartheid. In Gandhi's soulful account of Namibia's history, we learn about what it means to peacefully fight for justice and to heal. And part of that healing process is education. And for Gandhi, it's important to educate not only his children, but the world about Namibia's history. In staying true to his passion for education, Gandhi has gone on to become a leader in the field, and he is now the director of the University of Kansas' Achievement and Assessment Institute Center for Educational Opportunities. He's also the president of the nonprofit, the Association of the Over Herero Genocide in the USA. One thing that was really beautiful in speaking to Gandhi is that despite the challenges he faced as a kid growing up during apartheid in Namibia, he still has so much love for his country, and as he says, his soul is Namibian. I think it's a beautiful story that taps into the humanity in all of us, and I'm excited to share this with you guys. So now I'm going to cut to our interview. Thank you very much for, for joining us. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. Um, I left uh, Namibia in 1974. My wife, whom I met in high school, left Namibia with me, so we, and my purpose was to go abroad and to receive military training uh, to fight for the independence, the liberation of Namibia. And uh, so I traveled through Angola and I traveled through Zaire, which is now the Democratic Republic of the Congo. And then uh, I lived in Zambia. And uh, from Zambia, I met a uh, Mennonite missionary who had been teaching at a small liberal arts college in Kansas. And also at uh, uh, sponsorship from the United Nations Institute for Namibia. And I have been in Kansas since 1977. I'm African-American, but my soul is Namibian. My soul is Rova Herero. Was it apartheid that you were essentially escaping? We were escaping the South African control, the apartheid South African control of Namibia. And we demanded a better education system. Grandparents believe that it's critical that we ought to respect other people. But in order to do that, we had to respect ourselves and learn our history. So every evening when I go to the village, my grandparents on both sides of my paternal and maternal will sit us down. It was like a ritual every evening where they can tell stories, oral history. And that's for the first time when I heard about battles like uh, you know, or Hamakari, battles like uh, or, or Kanjira. But one thing that stuck out to me is that on my maternal grandfather, he was he had blue eyes, he was very fair, he would speak German to us. Now move back to my paternal grandmother, the same thing. She was very fair, uh, hazel eyes, and, and very light complexion. Those are the kind of things that uh, you know, as a little kid, you wonder why did. What, what was going on here? And, and then my grandmother would ask questions about what is that brick wall place? And it's, you know, it's a cemetery. What is a cemetery? That's where you bury people. Who's buried there? Oh, the people, there was a war. And who, who's buried there then? Oh, they came from far, far away land. Who are they? Oh, and the Germans of Jero. Oh, so there was a war between of Andrich Germans and us? Yes, there was a war. Huh. 
So were any casualties among the Obaero people? Yes, they were. Where are they? Where are they buried? Can we see them? And for a long time, I was never given that answer until maybe when I was later, maybe eight, somewhere there. And uh, it was that uh, you little boy, and no cemeteries for Bahero people and for the Nama people. Everywhere you walk, you're stepping on the soul of your, of your people, stepping on their bones. So that's, that's really, and then as I growing up, I went through that. And Kate, you must understand that uh, the Bahero people and the Nama people never had time for reflection. 1908, 1904 to 1908, the genocide. 1915, Namibia was taken over by South African forces at behest of the, of the European powers. Mm -hmm. And we went through the Treaty of Versailles. And then in 1923, through the League of Nations, somewhere there, Namibia was given to the United Kingdom. Overnight, United Kingdom gave Namibia to South Africa for administering it until independence. And for 75 years, we could not talk about as a people or reflect on it until after independence in 1990. So I hear some of my questions, how come we have never heard this? Well, and the events did not allow us to speak about this because then we started thinking about uh, national liberation of our, nation, of our country from South Africa. And I, I hearken back to what Mandela said when he was released from prison after 27 years. Somebody at some point asked him, are you bitter about your experience? And Mandela's response was very uh, telling. He said, uh, no, I'm not. If I were bitter, I would still be in jail. Then I'm not, I'm not free. The same with the Bahero people. They have never been uh, hostile. They have never desecrated the cemeteries of the German soldiers. We've gotten something from Germany, even though we defeated militarily, but we defeated them by taking on the spoils of the war. Began wearing the same uniform as they did. And someday, uh, hopefully we can have, find a way of, uh, for our, all of us to sit at the table, brotherhood and sisterhood and just be human beings. What we are asking is uh, an atonement by the German government. Today, as you must know, we have, uh, NGOs and German brothers and sisters who are on our side were doing advocacy work in, in Germany who are working so hard. We have been demanding restorative justice. We can never achieve that restorative justice unless we sit down and talk. The Ovaero people under the leadership of Paramount Chief Advocate Vekuiru Koro, by Johannes Isaac of the Nama Traditional Authorities, are demanding that let's sit down and have a conversation. The court case, it's an extension of it. Right. Nothing is off the table. You know, I, I visited the, uh, the African-American Museum in uh, Washington, D.C. And uh, it was so heavy. So when I was leaving this, a, a, uh, a place for self-reflection, mm -hmm. and I said to myself that I had time to, I had time to reflect on what I had just seen. And I said then, I said to myself, this is what has been uh, missing in the, in the narrative of the viral Nama people for so long. We have no place where we can go and reflect. How can you balance these two seemingly very different positions of fight for justice and forgiveness at the same time? Well, a, a part of that uh, is also education. So education is very critical to in, in, uh, educate our colleagues who have never heard of some of these uh, crimes against humanity. The point of the error number to the German government is reparations. And if uh, through reparations, we built a university of uh, technology or whatever in Namibia. Kate, every Namibian who attended school, it's not just of a hero and the number of people. But this is kind of the confusion that people say they going. No, if we only allow of a hero and number student to attend the school, then we're back to apartheid. 
it's amazing how little literature there is on this topic. I mean, I have uh, the Kaiser's Holocaust. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right here. Do you... <laughs> uh, it's about education, but but this, I mean, I mean, this is a. It seems like a very comprehensive account of the history, but it seems like it's one of the only books out really? there. Really? Yes. Like, I haven't found many books on this topic to this to this extent, and given the gravity of what happened to the Herero. Yeah, Nama people. One would expect there to be to be more. What does healing mean to you? Healing uh, to me means that uh, that there is recognition of the suffering of my people, and I should be the instrument through which they can realize and find some justice, find some fine resting place in their soul. Healing means that I can sit down with uh, my brothers and sisters of the German descent or Germans and for us to talk about this. And that's what healing is all about. To educate my children, to educate my colleagues of the need to keep on learning about it and educating others. That will set us free someday. You no, know, we cannot be wallowing in our, in our misery. That won't get you anyway. You have to get up, get the mud off you, and move on. And I think we all brought up that my great my grandfather, who father of German, who say that uh, uh, failure is not uh, is not an option. He would always say that, and but he he did not stop. He would say because I'm there to help you. I'm here to guide you. So you shouldn't be failing in whatever you're doing. And every time when I was at my low point as a refugee in the Congo, when I was at my low point of trying to give up because of the, what I was facing, I could hear his voice always in my ear that you cannot fail. I'm here to help you. I'm here to guide you. He was not there to guide me, but total strangers, total strangers in, in the Congo, in Zambia, and then the petrol strangers who saw something in me and Louisa to bring us to Kansas to go to school. To the point we both now are holders of doctorate degrees, mine in education as in a, a doctor of nursing practice. That's a story that uh, it, it is, uh, would not have been uh, feasible if I never keep on listening to that voice in my, in my ear. I, I want to... Uh, Thank you because you have contributed, you have been part of our journey to, to educate the world about the genocide of the Byron Nama people. Uh, it is friends like you and others who are helping us because in our bylaws of the Association of the Hero Genocide in the United States, one of our objectives is to educate the world about what happened, the genesis of the Byron Genocide and the, the Nama peoples. So uh, Kate, you have been part of the journey and I really want to thank you because you opened my eyes to a few things that I was not aware through your, your travel, your interviews of people and uh, things like so. Uh, we owe you a debt of gratitude to say people. Well, thank you so much. It's incredibly meaningful to me and thank you so much for doing this interview. I feel like we've learned a lot about your history Namibia's history and what it means to, to heal as an individual and, and as a community. We are all, uh, you know, God's children. That's why we need to find purpose in life. Hey guys, that's it for today. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe at the link below, and I will see you in the next video.